Jan has promised to talk about some of the solutions around mental health and emotional well-being. We recognize that, of course, it's easy that we hear about all of these kind of catastrophic type of issues around one's mental health. It's really important that we do not confuse this talk with psychiatrists or mental health teams when they're referring and using a tool such as the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Health Disorders. We want to start by just imagining the mind as this kind of wonderful structure. And within this structure, how we process the world, yeah, our cognition, our thinking. And when we look at it, we think it's perfect. We think that it governs us, it governs our behavior, it governs what we do. And sometimes we develop an inflated opinion of this thing, this mental processing, this cognition. And sometimes we place all of our view of ourselves, which is fine. It's fine until something goes wrong. When something goes wrong, it shows or identifies the fragility, the vulnerability in what we take for granted. It's a bit like um, having a thumb. You take it for granted and then all of a sudden you lose it and all of a sudden your ability to manipulate the world using this hand changes. On a deeper level, what I'm talking about is this often goes wrong when our emotions are not fully understood. When I go into this deeper, of course, the real powerhouse within a human being isn't our thinking and our cognitive processing. Don't get me wrong, it's extremely important. But the real powerhouse within the human being are our emotions. Yeah? And here, I've got this bowl of water, slightly colored blue, just to give us a sense of our emotions. And when our emotions are well, then of course, our cognitive processing operates well. There's no discord. Because everything's well, we give this the power, not our emotions, not our emotions, which is represented here by the um, water. However, when our emotions are disturbed, what happens then? Well, of course, what happens then is this. Our way of viewing the world, our way of processing information, our cognition, our thinking, everything starts to become a little bit challenged. And the more disturbed our emotions are, of course, our processing and our thinking becomes more disturbed as well. Fortunately or unfortunately, if we do not pay enough attention to our emotions, of course, this is what happens to our cognitive processing. It becomes disrupted. And it's this disruption that we call mental ill health, emotional or a lack of emotional well-being. It's this process whereby this is not in sync with our emotions and because our emotions are ultimately the real powerhouse and within us of course our processing our cognition our thinking gets disrupted to a greater or lesser extent but whatever happens and what we must be able to pay attention to is that it becomes disrupted the individual goes into a state of discord and this discord is something that we start to use terminology like anxiety depression, personality disorder, whatever you want to go into. Because this thing now is disrupted. It becomes broken, it becomes traumatized, it becomes shattered, or it suffers minor damage. Of course, when we're talking about something like COVID and the impact of the pandemic and the whole discussion on social isolation, social exclusion, um, um, social distancing, all of these places massive pressure on the human being psyche. Massive pressure. 
our emotions are going crazy because we're, we're meant to be in contact. We're meant to communicate. We're meant to have a tactile relationship. We're meant to talk, communicate, to listen. We're meant to do those things. We're meant to be stroked and hugged. We are meant to do these things. If they are taken away from us, what happens to your emotional state? But more than that, how do you process it? And if you're not processing it well, this is what happens. How can we maintain this state? As opposed to going into this state. It's quite clear, isn't it? One represents poor or a poor sense of one's emotional well-being and mental health, while this suggests that the individual feels, I'm not going to say okay or secure, but this individual here understands their emotional state. He or she understands their emotional state. So even under great pressure, they still remain cohesive as opposed to fragmented. So this is about paying attention and it's about paying attention to people who are close to you. A partner, your children, your friend, your associates, your next door neighbor. But what are you paying attention to? What is this checklist? Well, the first part of the checklist is this. Is someone that you know still visible? Or has he or she left the grid? Have they disappeared? Have they withdrawn? If you haven't heard from them, if you don't see them, if you notice in your home that someone is more distant, don't ignore it. Approach them, talk to them, ask questions. These are indicators that the individual may be going through some emotional distress. Is the individual's mood changeable? Is the individual no longer consistent? Does there feel to be an irregularity in how he or she is communicating? And remember, this doesn't have to be somebody in your household. This could be someone outside of your household, but you're noticing these things. Don't ignore it. And this part's about, this checklist is about do not ignore it. Is somebody overly cautious? Are they terrified of going outside now? Are they terrified in making contact with someone? Is this whole position regarding two meters become so powerful in them that they're locking themselves away? You may have to talk to them about their anxieties, their tensions. When does vigilance become paranoia? And if it becomes paranoia, we know that the individual's mental health or the individual's sense of well-being may be challenged. Sleeping. Somebody that normally has a sleeping pattern, which is all of us, if you notice that their sleeping pattern has become more and more haywire, then don't ignore it. Sleep is one of those consistent reminders that the individual is comfortable with themselves or uncomfortable with themselves. It's a basic function. Eating. If the individual's eating pattern is now changed in a way that doesn't look comfortable, notice it, don't ignore it. The individual may be eating late, late at night, early, early in the morning, eating all the time, it's constantly consuming sweet foods, comfort foods. Notice it. 
That means that the individual's emotions are being challenged and he or she is experiencing some form of sadness, some form of anger, some form of hurt. Talk to them, don't ignore it. So that's a checklist. You can even add other things to your checklist. But if you pay attention to the other, you can support the other by noticing them and most certainly not ignoring them. In conclusion, it's really important to remember it's quite difficult to pay attention and notice others if you're not noticing yourself. So the same checklist that you use for others, you'll take time to think about yourself in the very same way. How are you feeling? What is your mood? Are you isolated? Because it's very difficult to support someone else if you have a bad sense of awareness regarding yourself.